The latest PlayStation 5 system software update is now live for everyone as of September 2022, and there's a decent amount of changes in here, both things that Sony did and did not tell us about, so here's everything inside this latest firmware. 1440p is now officially supported for compatible TVs and PC monitors. You can head to Settings, Screen and Video, Video Output, and select Test 1440p Output to see if your current display is supported. Developers should now be able to support this resolution natively as a rendering option if they wish, but for the time being, where most games aren't offering native 1440p, you can instead see improved anti-aliasing when playing anything above 1440p. So for example, a native 4K game will be super sampled to 1440p if that's the resolution you choose to play from. It is important to note, however, that 1440p support for the time being will have variable refresh rate turned off, so just be mindful of that when selecting your preferred resolution. You can now organize your games with the game list feature available in your game library. If you go to the Your Collection tab, you'll now see this option. You can select up to 100 games for a game list, and it doesn't matter if they're disc, digital, PS Plus, installed, uninstalled, or streaming, and from there you can give them a custom name. These lists will now appear above your entire collection library, and you can make up to 15 game lists. Games that support the PS5's activity cards will now have this tied more directly into the game's hub page. Previously you'd have a game hub with the option to start the game, or scroll down to view its various cards, if it had any. Now the most relevant card will be displayed as a resume activity button right next to the play game option. So the main difference here would now be, play game acts as a cold start if the game isn't already running, or it will simply resume if it is, but resume activity will take you to what you were doing last in the game, even if the game is completely closed. It is worth noting, however, that the card system can be a bit inconsistent support-wise, so it won't always skip menus, load screens, or take you to your very last checkpoint. It will largely depend on how the developer has supported the feature. If a game has multiplayer, then you might also notice that any multiplayer cards can be placed next to the play game button as well. Even for older PS4 titles, you can be offered a direct link to join a friend group, and if you select activity details, that will show you the relevant card with the group you would join. With this updated game hub, you'll also notice the background image may change depending on if the current activity card has a developer supplied image. In the case of Stray, the default background is gone in favor of a screenshot showcasing the area you were last in. Also, if PS Plus Game Help is supported, and if it's available in the current activity, there will be a View Hints button right above the option to resume activity. Selecting this will bring up the card, allowing you to check out the hints. If there is no PS Plus game help, then you will have a View Activity Details button, which will still just bring up the card normally. Under the Recommended Gameplay Video section, you'll see labels that explain why the videos are recommended to you, like Fast Play, High Score, or Top Performance. In Settings, and Sound, there's now separate menus for 3D audio one for TV speakers, and one for headphones. Under each one, you can adjust these settings, but there's also a new option that lets you directly compare stereo audio versus 3D audio. That way you can see more clearly if there is a big difference, and adjust accordingly. This is available for both headphone and TV speaker 3D audio. When you're in a party, you can now send a share screen request to members directly from the voice chat card. When you join a party, and if there's party members playing a game that can be joined immediately, you'll receive a notification with the option to join that session right away. When you receive a message, you can now hit the options button when looking at the message and choose to view that player's profile from there, rather than having to hit view members. When you first accept a friend request, you can view their profile right away under the accepted request tab.
From the game base card, you can now send stickers and or voice messages. Some adjustments have been made to the web browser, namely the zooming functionality. There's two different ways to zoom now. The basic zoom increases the size of the elements on the page while adjusting the page layout so everything fits without having to scroll left or right, whereas magnify increases the size of everything without layout changes, but requiring you to move around the page to see everything. Also, the maximum zoom rate is now 500%. Voice commands can now be used to search for content on YouTube. From anywhere on PlayStation 5, even during gameplay, you can say commands such as, Hey PlayStation, search for Returnal gameplay on YouTube. Okay. If you have the screen reader turned on, you can now skip the instructions being read out loud if you want to enter voice input immediately when trying to enter text anywhere on the console. Change to symbol pad, read all. Switch to voice. Also for screen reader, if there's on-screen button shortcuts being displayed, the screen reader will announce these as well. R3 button, help slash rating slash privacy slash terms. If you have a passcode enabled on the console, custom button assignments will be enabled during this screen. When looking at trophies, you can now hit options on a trophy list and toggle reveal all, which will show all hidden trophies on that list so you don't have to manually reveal each one separately. This setting will stay on for as long as you want on a per game basis. Also under settings for accessories, while not directly a new feature per se, we can see PSVR 2 now being mentioned on the console directly, where it lists PSVR 2 sense controllers using Bluetooth communications, regardless of the adjustment for the setting about wired or wireless connections. That is pretty much everything, and as it stands currently, the next major PS5 firmware is rumored to be around March of next year, uh, and that's a rumor. Allegedly, that one will include Discord voice chat functionality, alongside, you would assume, uh, many other things, but uh, until then, we'll have to wait and see what happens, but uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you haven't just yet, please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Mystic Ryan, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.